am doing like the, I usually have an assistant, my apprentice working with me, so I'm doing everything on myself on the iPad. If you're joining on Instagram, hi, I'm doing this. Um, and then I want everyone who can to put on their video, go for it. Get, everyone gets situated. We're gonna wait for everyone to gather. Hi, nice to meet you. People that I know and don't know, Nicole, nice to meet you, darling. I know you can probably see me over here, but I'm like looking over here where you are. I'm gonna do my best to like organize all that. Roxy's a familiar face, so beautiful. Some people are still connecting to audio. Hi, Belinda, hi, Cass, Susanna. Okay, cool. All right, so you guys can hear the music okay? Give me a thumbs up. All right, so as we're waiting for more people, more participants to join. Oh, I got a hand, so I got like applause. <laughs> you guys are so cute. So as we're waiting for more participants to join, we're gonna work a lot tonight with Tibetan energies. And this is the wisdom of the Dakini and Guru Rinpoche. And so I invite you guys to just move your body in just these snake-like motions and gestures. Whatever feels good for you. I'm doing a temple program called Initiate, which you guys are gonna hear about. But I just want you to weave with the energy. And we're gonna do some peacock medicine tonight. I've got some beautiful peacock energy backing, back, backing us up. And so imagine, what if you were a peacock, right? What if, what would, how would you walk in your peacock way? How would you move your physical body to unfurl or fan your feathers? Or even if you, does that metaphor actually like bring up fear? and your ability to expand your body. So I really invite you, even if you're resistant to being on camera and moving with me, I invite you to just open, yes. How does that feel just to open your arms and the wings on the back and feeling your throat, sticking out your tongue, Ah, relaxing your jaw. I got a massage this morning because I woke up and from sleep I was so tight. Sometimes in our sleep we curl up, we contract, we psychologically process things that are not really needed. And we're gonna be moving a lot of that energy tonight actually. The metaphor is poison into medicine the process of purification. So again, if you were a peacock, if you were a peacock and you had a giant tail, so bring some of the energy now into your hips, widening out your beautiful tail feathers. Yes, get it, I can see you, that's beautiful. For those of you who are not on camera, I invite you to be seen a huge part of the calling of the initiate is to allow yourself to step through the doorway and then to offer yourself in prayer as an aspect of the divine. You are art. You are medicine. Your movement is medicine. Your movement transforms the poisons of stagnancy, of heaviness, of density. Oh God, I could feel some of you. I could feel that. I could feel how that resonated with some of you. You were like, yeah, that's in my belly. <laughs> that's in my guts. So imagine, we're gonna be working with this all, all evening, but I imagine to grab whatever part of that felt like, ugh, and then offer, see if you can gather that energy and then maybe shake it out, like move it. Wow, 
wild noises, primal sounds allow you to shed so that we can drop in, so that we can drop into our meditation, so that we can feel our power, our truth, our strength, bringing yourself to stillness. And any last minute touches of the hands on the body where that tightness is lingering, just note it for this moment. Just note it because this is what we're going to pray into. I'm feeling it a lot around my jaw, the head, the heaviness of holding ourselves upright. I know I need a lot of support with that. So if you can allow this temple to hold you, the earth to hold and support your, your solid being. And we call now to the ancient ones, the ancestors, the guides, and the guardians that are always here to support us. Divine masculine and divine feminine consciousness. We bow to you knowing that we are a conduit, heaven and earth. Ascended Masters, we call upon you now, Guru Rinpoche. Thank you so much for the wisdom traditions. We are so grateful. Oh. A large metaphor in the Tibet is the symbol of the thunderclap. It awakens, the lightning bolt is the light of consciousness. We're invoking that energy here tonight. Really, 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 really blessed to have you all in the space. Thank you so much for saying yes. Ah, beautiful 15 of us. So glad, glad to see some of you. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Simon. Hello, Amber. Hello, Bobby. Yes, those of you who are off of video, I invite you to bring yourselves on when you are ready, when you feel called. Mmm, yummy, yeah? Hi. How is everybody? I would love to hear if you guys want to put anything in the chat before I get started with what we're going to be and bring and do and all the things. Before all the things, how are you? Some of my intention for tonight is I want to keep my transmission short because last time, one of my favorite things, I mean, we're going to go deep, but you know, succinct, because um, I really liked at the end talking to all of you guys. And I really enjoyed uh, doing the, um, the coaching at the end. And that was really lovely. So we'll see if that is in the space today. What I'm going to bring through tonight is the medicine of the peacock, the medicine of transmuting the poison into purification. And I want to read to you a little bit about the Tibetan symbols. And um, I'm working right now creating an audio track about the Dakini that I've been trying to craft for years. And it, I just know that it needs to come out in the highest alignment and it'll happen at the perfect time. And I'm going to be offering a Guru Rinpoche mantra for our invocation. I'll speak a little bit about my program, which some of you may have seen because um, I sent it out with the email as the initiate group. That's going to be amazing. And it's so cool how it's organically forming on its own and how the things that we bring to life, and this is what I'm going to teach as ceremony, the things that we bring to life have a consciousness of their own. And it's the same exact thing. I even wrote in that thing, um, this is for you if you believe the earth is a conscious being. Because I believe everything has, everything is, like if we imagine whatever God is or the divine or spirituality, it, and I know we're going like, that's like super large concept, but I believe everything is connected, infinite everything. And how we become conduits of healing and share medicine in the world is that we follow the thread because it will guide us. One time I was um, paddleboarding, it was like the only time I paddleboarded when I lived by the ocean. And the doll, there was like a pot of 40 dolphins. And I could see, because I have a little bit of psychic gifts, there's, there, there were like messing with me and there was light 
and they were moving and I could like follow them and where I followed the light, they would like play with me. And I don't know if some of you have ever had that happen with whales or dolphins, et cetera, but it's the same thing with the universe where we follow the light, it plays back with us. And there's this beautiful dance that we can do with. And so I believe our creations and all of creation is that. So let's see how you guys are all doing today. Oops, chat. All right, so um, I had a meltdown on waking this morning. Angela, oh, I love that. I, I don't know, that brings, makes my heart that feeling sleepy and so ready to receive your magic. You're so sweet. Love you, uh, Kelly. Um, feeling emotional at this moment. Glad to be here, so I'm late. All perfect. Susanna says, hey. Hi, sister. So glad to be here. Thanks, everyone. You guys are very... Um, welcoming and very polite and I love that for an introduction but I I also invite you to always put like how you're really feeling I like I love the one that was like I had a meltdown today <laughs> my favorite thing I was on the phone with somebody who wants to work with me um one-on-one -on -one, and she was like I was like yeah I don't fear being dark feminine myself I do not fear the dark feminine so let me adjust I'm gonna put on this headset so I can hear a little version of myself and I'm going to call in Guru Rinpoche but before I do that I want to give you guys the chant because it's trippy this is maybe some of your first um initiation into that word is so in my face right now initiation feeling like so much is being transformed calling in ease in the process of this repatterning yeah snaps to that prayers to that Hoping for calming the mind and a good sleep. May it be so. It must be so. So this is the seven line prayer, which I memorized on the way to Burning Man, chanting at the top of my lungs on a, in a desert road, slamming on my steering wheel, invoking it into the, the moment in 2016. I'm going to do my best with this and just receive. You, if you want to read it, you can. Um, oh, rebirth, yes, with the equinox, rebirth, 100%. If you want to read it, you can, and if you don't want to, um, just listen. Borgen yongi no japsam Pemage satam pola Yet sin jogi no rupne Pemashogne Jesu dra Kodukandro man poko Keki Jesu traduki Jinjilab chik se sukso Guru Pema Siri Guru Pema Siri Organ Yogi No Jabsam Pema Gesadam Pola Yet Sin Jogi No Drupne Pema Jogne Shesudrak Kodu kandro meng pokor ke ki je sutra duki Jinjilab chik se suk sol Guru pema siri o morgan yogi no jab sam Pema ge sabam pola Yasen chogi no drupne Pema jogne she sudrak Kodu kandro meng
every time I do one of these with you all, I feel the need for grounding. It's so important as part of our practice. So take a deep breath and feel your anchor upon the earth right now. Good. I love working with those who are ready. Take another deep breath and descend your roots. And if emotion is coming up for you, that's okay. Take that emotion and send it down, 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 down. Allow it to be received by the earth. Imagine all energy that you do not wish to have, that you are carrying around in your blood, bone, and being descending down deep into the earth now, gently. So as you breathe in, contract your muscles, squeeze everything all the way up as you fill up. Wrinkle your face, bring everything just forward, 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 and feel that. Feel that, feel that like you're almost gonna burst. And then like a slow stream of golden light. Gently let it go. Whether it be the 
period of time you were just moving through the winter coming to the close in the north. A relationship that you want change within. Feel the stuck energy. Let's see if you can see it now with new light, new eyes, new awareness, transmuting the poison into medicine. strong enough. It's interesting, I'm feeling in the field right now like there's 
resistance to gathering up. And I remember when I first did this practice, I felt the same, like, I have enough pain of my own. I don't want other people's pain. But imagine that you are larger than what you think you are. You are a whirlwind, a force of nature, and you can exercise through you to become a channel on behalf of this world. Om Shivaya. And so move that energy. This is how to embody prayer. And open the heart. So gathering one more time all of the suffering, all of those people who feel lost. parts of you that feel the same, and then inviting in radiant compassion, transmuting poison to medicine, and then as you breathe out, share it with the world, share that radiance, good, I can feel you. Imagining your heart opening, being bigger than you could have even possibly perceived. But you can feel it now, this dance of light and dark. And how they both exist within you. This last moment, just draw radiance down from above, feeling the web of light that connects us to it and all of each other. And then draw that radiance down through your grounding cord into the earth that you are a conduit between heaven and earth. Because of the strength of the circle, anything here comes in can be purified and made into light. Gante, gante, margate, marasangate, bodhiswa. Gante, gante, margate, marasangate, bodhiswa. Welcome back. Hi. No rush, but if anybody wants to share in the chat how that was. Oh, people are rubbing their faces. That's always a good sign after a meditation. <laughs> so I'm going to read to you a little bit about the beauty of the peacock. Oh, and wiping their eyes. Oh, good. I love all of you so much. I really, and you know, Oh, that was juicy. Thank you, Angela. So nice to meet you. You know, one of the best things about this um, thing that I'm doing with these is that I, you know, when you when you do a business like this, a practice, you're like out and you're posting content because like you're like, I have to do this, right? And then you don't even know who's out there watching you. 
And like, so it's like really nice to be like, hi, people who are watching. That's great. So I'm seeing names I've never seen before. And that makes me so happy. And it's just an honor to serve, really, truly. Okay, so I do feel called to follow up with the information in the lecture. And it's because I'm a nerd. And I want to give this to you. Um, and so I just, as you're integrating and kind of coming back into your bodies, I just want to read something. And when you guys, um, oh, Belinda, thank you. That was deep. That's my, that's my, I'm a mama jamma. That's what I do. I do deep, deep, deep wisdom, ancient, hardcore work, which is what I'm going to do in the initiate program. Um, if you want more information about that, I'll put the link at the end, um, but it's on my website, which is my name.com, and it's going to be amazing. Um, yeah, and some of you have worked with me one on one, and my work can bring up a lot for people. Um, sometimes it's like it's ego cracking, but it's really, really beautiful, and um, and it's always in the highest service. I've had to do a lot of ego cracking deaths on my own in order to bring the medicine. The medicine of the peacock was one of my initiations. Um, it took a few years, but I was deep in, and these, all these peacock feathers that I have, I lived in Cape Canaveral for a little while and I used to go on walks that I would call fairy walks and I would gather them because we had like a flock of peacocks that lived there. And that was like the final moments of my initiation. And then when I moved to Colorado, um, I was in this Airbnb in a cabin in the forest and it and the bedroom that I ended up in had peacocks everywhere. And it was like, you graduated. Little did I know that that was only one precipice of a peak of a mountain that I was then going to go down, which was this huge initiation around my own attachment issues, my own values, um, all of these, like, which really initiated me into being the teacher and the medicine woman that I am and to understand how to serve a circle. And, you know, there's so much, um, yeah, anyway, they're telling me not to, the birds just came in and we're like, don't get, go into all the story. All right, we're gonna teach, I'm gonna teach. Okay, I wanna read this to you. This is good. I'm, I'm good because my guides are they're on, on me. <laughs> they're on me and that makes me so happy. Which is so funny because it's like I used to be like you hold me to such high standards, but it's like it's really it's made me better. And and that ego, those ego, they grind you down. It's 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 always for for your becoming. And I say thank you so much also for teaching me how to serve on behalf of the all and the whole. And so I acknowledge the beings that are helping always in the invisible. And that's why you're all here, because you sense it too. And your beings who are in the visible, invisible, they help you while we're all here together. And one of my favorite moments of that meditation was like the, the moment where I felt it all, like I could feel us all lock in energetically. And I hope that some of you guys felt that too. Oh, now we've got all kinds of interference. We've got honking horns. In the jungles of poisonous plants struck the peacocks through medicines of gardens, of beauty lie near, though medicines of gardens of beauty lie near, the masses of peacocks do not find the gardens pleasant, but they thrive on the essence of poisonous plants, in familiar fashion to the brave bodhisattvas that remain in the jungle of the worlds of concern, so the enlightened beings that could leave, but they remain here in the world of concern to help us, same with the guides and the guardians. No matter how joyful this world pleasure garden, these brave ones are never attracted to pleasures, but thrive in the jungle of suffering and pain. That gives you a different perspective. The mind of the sentient beings in this world is like a thick forest of desire and hatred. The pleasures of material possessions are like a beautiful medicinal garden. And the brave bodhisattvas, because of having the realized shortcomings of samsara, are not attracted to the samsaric pleasures, just as the peacocks are not attracted to the medicinal plants. They have beautiful colors like red, blue, and green, and please other beings just by being seen. Similar, any body who sees a bodhisattva receives great happiness in his mind. I'm gonna like kind of the bodhi 
bodhisattvas having the attitude of wishing to only to work for sentient beings and not desiring any happiness for themselves can utilize the poisonous thoughts of ignorance, desire, hatred, and so forth in order to accomplish the works for sentient beings. By eating poison, the peacock's body becomes healthy and beautiful. He is adorned with five feathers on the head, which symbolize the five paths of the Bodhisattva and the attainment of the five Buddha families. The peacock is a very important bird. First, it is an emblem of romantic love and beauty. The mortal enemy of snakes killing cobras with their talons. The main quality of the peacock is transmutation of poison into nectar. It's tied to Lord Shiva, getting a blue throat from taking the poison produced by the churning of the ocean and transmuting that poison by the peacock is said to produce the electric blue of its throat and plumage, the wisdom eyes of its tail feathers. In Vajrayana Buddhism, a symbol of a bundle of peacock feathers is used as a sprinkler for consecrated water or Amrita blessing and is contained in the blessing flask. In specific tantric rituals, Individual feathers are used as a fan, a mirror, parasol adornments, and also as the feathers for darts, as the peacock feather parasol is used by the goddess Paladin Lamo, symbolizing her wisdom, activities, and the transmutation of all evils or poisons. So that's how you can see my little Raja crown in the background. Uh, we have the medicine of Tibet here. So, all right. How is everyone? How is everyone? How are you all? Lake Atitlan in the house. So beautiful. Cool. What did that bring up for you guys? Do you guys want to have like a little bit of a sharing circle before we peace out? Um, how are you? How are you? Now's your turn to, to hang out with me. I love the peacock I painted one. If you guys, if anybody wants to share anything that's come up for them or share something that's present, uh, now would be the time. We can take a few moments to do that. Just raise your hand and I will um, I will unmute you if, I, if it needs to be that I do that. I'm happy to take your questions. I'm happy to receive from you. I can talk about my program and do the pitching stuff, but I, I'd rather talk to you. <laughs> I'm doing a beautiful temple. I will talk about it while, while I'm waiting for someone to raise their hand. Um, I'm doing a really cool thing. It's going to be a six month initiation group. And you can hear my, my um, voice get lower when I talk about it, which means that it's going to be serious. and I'm very excited. Um, so the what I'm going to do is I'm going to take everyone through a journey. I, I organized it. It was originally a nine month group. So I wrote down the nine parts to ceremony as if it was a circle invocation, doing the blessing, the same things that I do, the tools that I do, the grounding part, getting your mind out of the way. A lot of the people who come to me in one on one work are all these. They have like such potential and the places that they're stuck is there's many reasons. The samskaras are, I don't feel like going into a whole lecture about karma, but we have contractions and aversions from based on past lives, based on conditioning in this lifetime. And so there are reasons and everybody's is different, but so precious to them as an individual and as a soul. And the way that it, since we're in this Buddhist landscape, I'll tell you a little bit about how I understand incarnation works. Okay, so as a soul, we always want to bite off more than we can chew. And we always want to incarnate because we're like, this is something that I want to do I've never done before. How, how do I, how do I, how do I do this new thing, right? 
and then there's all the past stuff that we've done and then there's like the growth i'm i feel a call to growth joseph campbell calls it the call to adventure right the hero's quest it's like what how do i become more than what i am so then there's the comfort zone and it's everything that you've done it's the past lives which i see which is the soul traumas of hey i remember when i tried to do that thing before and it went wrong and so all of these impressions we carry as samskaras in the light body, in the astral body from incarnation to incarnation. So that's like a very short version of that. And so you're here in this lifetime and you're feeling a call to express yourself, to open your voice, to, to share your power. But there's, there's, there's pain that you have to face in order to download the purity or the beauty that you have the opportunity to become, if only that you can transmute that suffering. And I know this for a fact, even though it seems really airy fairy, is that every time we, there's different chapters in someone's life where we are given a gateway to access medicine from other lifetimes. But in order to mine the gold from that life, we have to go through the wound and then transmute that wound into medicine. And it is then that we anchor more of the soul on the earth, which has to do with being in that expanse. For those of you who know astrology, you may be able to follow what I'm saying in regards to the south node, which is the karma that we've carried from other lives. And then the north node is opposite of that on the wheel. So we're really familiar with one archetype and the calling is to become the opposite. But as we know in the law of one, all of the opposites are two sides of the same coin and the center point is transcendence. And that is why the witness consciousness and neutrality to itself, which is what enlightenment is in the Bodhisattva vow, is like when I am not attached to any of it, one polarity or another, we can open up and then we can be all things. So if anyone has any thoughts or questions or curiosities about that, I'm, I'm open to, hear, to receiving them. If that is completely over anyone's head, I will also want to hear it because I want to know um, if I'm just speaking garbly gook to all of you. That would be really cool. So in the program that I'm running, um, we're going through different wisdom traditions. And obviously, as I'm a nerd that I am, and you can hear me like, guess what? Guru Rinpoche, old with scriptures, and then this, and then this about Bodhisattva, and this about enlightenment is like, this is me geeking out. And being able to do these circles is just me like being so happy that I get to teach and do all these things. So my intention for the initiate group program is to literally pour all of my wisdom from many lives and intergalactic wisdom into the beings who are meant to come to encourage them on the path and also shorten time for them, <laughs> for you, um, because that's basically what I get to do as a teacher is to give you a little bit of all these things that I found out on my own in a very short amount of time. And then I'm going to work one on one with each person. And so that that makes me very invested and know for a fact that they can get a lot out of the container. And so since I'm talking about it so much, I'll put the, um, the link into Oh, and two people have said something in the chat. Okay, I'll put the link and you guys can learn more. And then I'm doing an application process for this copy link. And the application is so that we can talk because I want to make sure that everybody who comes in is meant to have, meant to be there, number one. Let's see. And the other thing is if you know of anybody who could use it, you're more than welcome to. Um, and my north node is in Taurus and I'm a Pisces 
with Saturn. So south node Scorpio, north node Taurus, beautiful. Grand Pisces, cool. And Saturn Pisces, you're going into your Saturn return, Angela. If your Saturn's in Pisces, it's important. Saturn's just moving into Pisces in a few weeks. Okay. So I feel complete in the speaking and teaching and transmitting. Does anyone have any questions that they want to ask or anything that they want to share? And if not, then we might just... <laughs> Angela says, I know I'm feeling very uncertain. <laughs> totally. I work with a lot of people who are in their Saturn return because um, it's a big transition time. And I feel like as a wisdom teacher, there's I, I had a really big karmic cycle with Saturn. Um, because all my planets are like this in the chart, they're all right here. So when, Saturn, when I hit my Saturn return, I was like, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then Saturn hit the rest of my planets. And I was like, oh, fall from grace. Oh, just kidding. But um, Saturn gives gifts. So after every Saturn cycle or every karmic cycle, it's like you put in the work. This is initiation to itself. You put in the work and then you become a different you. That is the point of that. So. Amber says, thank you so much. Roxy, did you have a question to share? Yeah, go for it. Can you mute, unmute yourself or no? Yeah, I can. Okay, great. Thank you for the medicine. Yeah. Thank you for the grounding. I didn't realize that I needed that until you did that. So thank you. And um, when we were in that space, I just imagined all of us holding hands and just being in that, that heart space. So very healing. Totally. That, sorry, there's a husky upstairs, but I think he must feel you. Um, <laughs> you're just like, rawr, 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 rawr. Um, huskies are great. Um, I know that was really, isn't that wild? It's like, it's, you know, this is what they call witchcraft that they are like, don't, uh, you know, bad, bad that we can astrally, energetically feel each other and heal each other. It gives us a lot of power as individuals, but not as individuals. When we come together as a collective, we have more power. That's the whole framework of doing these kind of engagements is that, you know, like for Insight Timer, it's like I'm broadcasting to all of you and I can feel you, but I wanted more intimacy and more connection. So I'm like, oh, healing circles. Okay, good. Something, I'm he I keep hearing the word witchcraft, witchcraft, witchcraft. Why is that saying that? Roxy, is there something around witchcraft? Why, why am I hearing that? I don't know. I'm feeling that, so I don't, I don't know. Tell me, what are you feeling? Uh, for, I, for some reason right now, I'm feeling like a, an ease right here. Uh-huh. I don't know if that's ancestral stuff coming through. Uh-huh. Yeah, I, I don't know either, but when you started to talk again and you said that I'm feeling that, I think... I'm, I, you know, in the holding hands and like, there, that's going to be a principle in my, um, I actually wrote this in the outline of initiate, it says drawing down the moon. And that was one of the first workshops I ever taught like 10 years ago. And it was at a yoga studio and it really has to do with like, it was all women. And it was like coming together during an astrological transit, you know, to be the same what we're doing with the full moon that's rising right now. It's like to be in a co cohesion energy and respect the elements of that i can feel that you're in your that's beautiful i can feel something happening around you multidimensionally right now it's just super cool there's a reclamation that happens when we start to because of the indoctrination of the separation of the natural world and the religions that took kind of took over and separated in a patriarchal fashion and like and like really just ripped away what it is for us to be in attunement with each other and to trust each other even you know as women you know there's a sisterhood wound in that is like to pit us against each other and then when that is reclaimed it's so healing for a soul who has spent other lifetimes as a magical being and then like can't quite find their way back there it's a huge part of the work that i do and I think that's why that meditation on Insight Timer Healing the Witch Wound got so big is that it's not, it's a collective frequency now, like we carry a seed of that. And then when we reclaim like that we're safe and that we're, it's totally safe to connect and then to be in communion, it's a huge gift. 
the the first piece of content that I put out, like promoting the program, it, it's it's like me dancing and it, me coming into being seen has taken a very long time. And I feel like a lot of us hide from the world because we're afraid of judgment. We're afraid of, of consequences. And so we don't really show up in our full power. And what a, what a blessing it is when that starts to shed and then we actually get to celebrate and dance and be embodied and empower. And it's the same thing with that Tonglen of like taking in that oppression and then radiating out like, it's okay. Like I, I remember that and I don't have to own that anymore. It's not mine, it's not mine. And then sending forgiveness to that memory. And like every time that contraction comes up, that fear, oh my God, I'm gonna be seen. Neutralize it with compassion. Does that help? Does that resonate with what you? Yeah, it, it, what came through as you were speaking was just healing, a lot of healing of old, old, old wounds of not being in that circle and just. Yeah. Mm. Deep healing. Yeah. Congratulations. Those are really beautiful, you know, I feel like I don't think that's me. I think I just get to reflect a space and your your soul is ready for that. Just huge. It's really huge. And also because I could see um, in your energy field, like what was and this is how it works. We have like this Merkaba, we have this energetic structure and there's patterns that are in it. And that's the samskaras I was talking about when I was like, oh, it's contracted or oh, it's this. And then through being in spaces like this, it gets rewired. Mm. And that's how healing occurs. And that's a lot of why I work with this. I mean, there's many reasons I work with the sound tools, but the sound tools, the mantras, the intention, the prayer, the chants, all of that, all of that creates a temple to itself so that we can be a conduit of healing. We can be in a field of frequency of healing. We can transmit healing for ourselves first and then for the world. That's deeply the thank you for allowing me to speak into that because it's deeply in the intention of my work and the intention of this program, this temple, the six month initiation that I'm going to be leading others through. Thank you. My honor. Tell me more. Tell me more. Did you get very far? Um, I'll read Belinda's comment. Unless Belinda, did you want to come on? Is the lack of both of an individual and collective ability to level leverage the transmutation energy a driving factor to the lack of balance? Oh, you sound so scientific. Who is Belinda? Do you want to talk? <laughs> oh, okay, maybe not. Um, oh, good, Amber. Good. Yeah. No, don't worry about it. I'll. I'll. I'll I'm going to go into it. Oh, everybody's so happy. I'm so happy that you're so happy. All right, Belinda, you're structured. And so I'm going to listen to this in a deeper way. What, what I'm seeing underneath your question, and it's interesting because it happens sometimes with structured people, in, but okay, this is the last thing I'll transmit and then I'm gonna go and we'll close and stuff. Um, because this was coming up in my week and it's funny that it's coming up right now. I think what you're, what the essence of like the hurt is of our society is that people have this illusion that they're in control of their lives. And in order to fight for that fake power and control, they are afraid of vulnerability and emotional honesty and being connected in the heart because being open in your heart there's, and trusting the infinite invisible world, there's this surrender where we're not in control at all and our ego desires are not important. <laughs> They're not important. <laughs> Sorry, it's like, it's like that's what enlightenment ends up being is like your aversions and your attractions, like, yeah, go away. Yeah, totally. Like you are in the, the Tao, it's like water. Water is the softest and hardest thing. Like it is going, is like you get moved, and sometimes you're like, oh, but like you gotta go. Like oh, the water's going this way. Like I gotta go, and so I feel like 
people don't allow because they grip on and control and, and we all on this even us light workers on this call do it constantly and in our intimate spaces our relationships with our parents we're always trying to get something and and my life has changed in the last six months dramatically by like disallowing like meh like Kelly, who's here, she gave me a wonderful transmission, like, no matter what you do, it's going to be fine. <laughs> I was like, great. <laughs> it doesn't matter. And it's such a beautiful truth. It's such a beautiful truth is that when we fully trust ourselves, we fully trust ourselves. And we can fully drop into our hearts and our bodies. And what I find is that people constantly run away from the, their, their own truth and their emotion. And our society is designed to confuse us and to be illusion. That is another principle of the Buddhist teachings is that the outward world is illusion. And so the more that we let go of that, the more that we can trust fall back into the infinite all, then we can allow ourselves to be multidimensional gangsters and give us, we have more power. This is like a really cool place to close because Ram Dass says this, he says, when you want power, you can't have it. You can't have it, you can't have it. Girl, and I, some of you have been with me this whole time. So you've watched like me be like, oh, I'm, an, I'm supposed to be an influencer. I'm supposed to do, no, 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 no. It's like, let go of that. You're a medicine woman. Oh, okay. Now people show up all the time. Medicine woman me, no problem. That's what I'm here for. Let go of how it's supposed to look, let go of how, what you think you need and trust life. It's like, yeah, trust life. Life knows more than uh, any of us. That was the, the last conversation I had with Ram Das, my guru, guide, brother in arms. I was so tense the entire conversation because my mind would not let go. And all he was saying was, you think you make decisions. You think you make choices. It's all her, he was saying, because he was saying, Divine Mother, it's all her. Let it go. Surrender. And so that's why last year I taught that six month group surrender. And it was beautiful. And this year, that is being transformed completely. It's a whole different program. But it has to do with initiate, being an initiate, because I have been an initiate and now I'm, I'm being initiated into holding a, a container that's going to be a, um, a co-ed, you know, sacred, masculine and feminine, which I, I, for those of you who are following me, that's what surrender was, was masculine and feminine woven, but this is in a different way. Okay, so that is it tonight. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for being with me if you have comments questions you didn't get to share something you want to tell me email me michelle at michellecotinier.com um, if you want to go to the initiate it's michellecotinier.com forward slash initiate or initiate um, it's just a privilege it's a privilege to be with all of you and to, 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 to just pour my my whole soul into these and I'm so grateful and I'm so happy that you all are here and showing up. It's always perfect. And um, that's also just a wonderful thing. I'll just look at the chat. Ah, uh, choose from inside the pillar of your being. Gangster, gangster, gangster. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Aho, namaste. And so it is in love, light, and warrior spirit. This is Michelle Infinity. I love each of you so, 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 so much, so much. Thank you so much for being here. And uh, let me know if you need anything. I'll talk to you soon. Enjoy your full moon. Have a beautiful evening. <laughs>